Hi everyone, I don't know if you can see me over the literal pile of food here, but today we're gonna be doing a mukbang and I ordered a lot. <laughs> so let me get this sorted first. I kind of forget what I ordered, honestly. I have two plates here because I think that's necessary. I feel like a kid on Christmas. I don't know what's in here. It smells funky. Okay, so there's some sort of chicken curry in here. Interesting. What's in this one? There is sausages in here. Wow, we really got everything. Holy shit, they're huge. Oh my god, that is huge. Oh my god, and look, they gave me five chips. Yay. <laughs> what is this? I genuinely don't know what this is. Okay, so there's chicken balls and chips and rice in here. Oh my god, I ordered so much. And then there's this, which is dun dun dun. Chips. Someone made a joke in my last video and was like, Adam has a different drink in everybody. You know what? We have a Coke today. The thing about me is, right, I hate hearing people eat, but when I'm watching mukbangs, I enjoy it. It's super weird and I make no sense for that. This is huge for no reason. It's pretty good. For me as well, mukbangs are such a weird concept because people's career is literally just mukbangs. And it's like, at what stage are they putting their health at risk? Because they'd be out here doing like gummy mukbangs four times a day. Could you imagine if I was a strict mukbanger with my current schedule? I'd be eating whole ass meals six times a day for six videos a day. Think about that. So I asked on my YouTube community for topics and questions to ask me and some of you did. Someone said you should talk about your mental health during lockdown and how lockdown was for you. So during lockdown I kind of peaked and then fell down again then peaked and fell down. A lot happened with me during lockdown. Honestly lockdown hasn't been as bad as what I thought it did. It went on for way longer than I thought it would. And I do think because things are reopening over here they are rushing to reopen them because the economy is struggling and stuff which I understand but you're just risking a second wave. My mental health during lockdown has been, again, peaks and goes down and peaks and goes down, but I think that's normal and we should expect that within ourselves and we shouldn't expect, oh, we're going to be happy 24-7 or we're going to be sad 24-7. Because in the past, I used to put them expectations on my mental health. Then if I didn't feel the way I hoped, then I would be disappointed within myself. Then I would go into, so for me, I kind of go day by day and I advise a lot of people that that's what they should do because once I started living like that, I was a lot happier. The weirdest thing about lockdown for me though, honestly, was right before lockdown, I was going to college every single day, seeing all my friends, and then after college, I was literally hanging out with my friends the entire night. So we were doing that because we were like, oh my God, summer's coming up, like yay. And then it got taken away like that, as it should have, because we all should have been going into lockdown. But it was weird and it really did take a toll on me because I went from seeing my friends every single day and, and having that interaction with my friends to not seeing them for a couple months and on a personal level that hit home for me and that was hard but at the same time staying home i was kind of like yeah this is what i should be doing anyway and this is what we should all be doing and i remember seeing people ignoring those guidelines and still going out meeting up with their friends and i was like there's no point for this and i did lose a lot of respect for people who were literally is this my microphone i did lose a lot of respect for people who were literally going out and ignoring the guidelines during like the first couple of weeks of lockdown because there was no need for it. I think one thing as well. So I think as well, we're going through a world pandemic right now. Like this is bizarre. Nobody knows what to do. And so the fact that I have vlogged my lockdown experience, I have a entire series on my channel called The Quarantine Diaries. And the fact I can look back on that whenever I'm in my 20s, 30s, 40s, if YouTube sticks around, you know what I mean? And be like, whoa, this is what I was doing during a lockdown of a world pandemic. Do you mind? I'm not even gonna pick her up, that was so rude. Because hopefully we don't have to go through another world pandemic in our lifetime, because you know what? They suck ass. But for the most part, my mental health has been pretty stable and good during lockdown. How's yours been? How have you been coping? What do you do outside of YouTube? So, I study film, I study media. Right before lockdown, I actually went to London for a BFI film academy, which was, I was put into a house with like 30 to 40 to 50 maybe, I can't remember other people around my age 16 to 19 and we basically had to make a documentary we were selected through application process flown out to london and we had like seven days to literally just create a documentary to the best of our ability and we had master classes with these really good like oscar winning directors and stuff and we were going to london to film and stuff and it was really cool so i study film and media outside of youtube someone said i hope you're doing a healthy mukbang don't watch this video <laughs> I don't know if you can hear this, but I live in a street and there's a dog and it just like barks 24 seven outside. Like even bring it inside so it can bark inside. Like I'm trying to film videos. Like I don't mean to be rude, like all love, but take your dog inside, please. Thoughts on cancel culture and whether it works. 
I think cancel culture, I've said this before, and taking accountability are two different things. And I hate when people mix them into two and they're like, oh, you're just jumping on the bandwagon of cancel culture. No, we're jumping on the bandwagon of trying to hold people accountable. That's what I have to say about that. Favorite Disney or Pixar movie? I've been rewatching Inside Out a lot recently. I really enjoy that one. Relationship advice, please. Well, Carla, I've never been in a relationship, so I can't give you relationship advice. But you know what? Follow your heart. If someone isn't treating you good enough, leave them. That's all I have to say. I should probably be asking you for relationship advice because it's not working for me. Someone said talk about Peaches. I have nothing really to say about her in this moment, but I just know that people need to stop giving her attention and she'll stop. All my comments are about Peaches. Y'all, stop it. Do you watch Glee? Glee is one of them TV shows that I've never watched and I will never want to watch. I've seen a few clips and it's just so awkward. I associate Glee with horse people. Talk about Kanye West running for president. Oh. This is the same for Paris Hilton too. Paris did a tweet and was like, Paris 2020, ha 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 ha. People will literally vote and write these people down. Kanye West has not done the application process in time to actually run for president, nor has Paris Hilton. So if you're writing down their names, you're just giving a vote to Trump. Do we want that? So I think it's so stupid people are even just taking in this concept of, oh yeah, Kanye 2020, Paris 2020, because they're literally just doing it for clout, which we're all aware of. And it's like, why are you feeding into it? It's not even a funny joke. What celebrities to stand that aren't problematic? Rina Sawayama, Mariah Carey, Britney Spears, stand the best. Tell us a dream you had before. Okay, so I need to say something, right? There's such thing, I think it's called lucid dreaming where you control your dreaming and stuff like that. In my opinion, I never remember dreaming, nor do I think I dream. I daydream all the time, but when I go to sleep, I think my body is so excited to finally be able to sleep that it does nothing. So I wake up and I have no memory of anything. I don't remember anything throughout the night and I don't remember dreaming. So people always ask me and they're like, oh my God, what do you dream about? And I'll be like, I don't remember. My biggest pet peeve as well is people telling me about their dreams. Not their dreams as in, oh, one day I would love to do this. Like they're like <sighs> dreams. Because most of the time they're fabricating it. Most of the time people who tell you about their dreams when they're sleeping are literally lying because they remember a concept of what they did during their dream. And then they just kind of like fill in the blank themselves and they're like, and then this happened, and then this happened. And like, someone is telling me about their dreams that they have when they were sleeping. And I'm kind of like, what do you want me to say? A, B, this isn't a real story. So why should I be like humoring you? My brother, like, God bless him, right? But he loves telling me about his dreams. And I don't care. I don't care, not just that it's his dreams or whatever, I don't care about anyone telling me about dreams they had when they were sleeping because I'm like, how do I know that you're not just like going off a tangent in your head right now? It means nothing to me. I'm so sorry. This is why whenever people are like, what do you dream about? I don't tell them because A, I don't think I dream <laughs> or else I don't remember it. And B, I could literally be like, hold on, let's do a reenactment. So you ask me what my dreams are and I go, Last night, I went to Mariah Carey concert, and then I got VIP, and then guess what? David Beckham walked in. Guess what then? Rihanna walked in. Me and Rihanna were having a conversation. Then she took me to VIP. Then we went on stage with Mar- Like, I could be saying, like, and you could be, like, believing me and all like that. And I'm, like, just making this up in my head. You know what I mean? It's for dreams for me. It's one of the most passionate, like, unpopular opinions that I have. Because everyone's like, I love hearing about your dreams while you were sleeping. I'm like, no, I don't give a shit. <laughs> So that's one thing that my friends always know not to tell me about dreams they have when they're sleeping because I will literally get so avidly upset. I'm like, I feel like you're just lying to me. I literally don't think I've dreamed in years. And that's not a sad thing, whatever. Maybe I am and I just don't remember it when I wake up or when I wake up, I'm normally busy straight away. I'll respond to emails. I'll do college work. I'll do whatever. I'll do YouTube work. So I don't really wake up and be like, Ah, uh, time to process. I'm like, wake up and go and start working. So it's like a weird concept to me because I see a lot of my friends and they're like, so chill. This is so off topic. They're literally like the vibiest people ever. And they have all these like stones and stuff like that. I love it. Like my best friend, Ellie, she's very much so into healing and energies and stuff like that. And my auntie Linda's into that. And I love all that stuff. I love observing people talk about that stuff because it is so interesting to me and this has no connection to what I'm saying about the dreams it's just something that's came into my head now I love people who are so chill like that and so vibey and so I feel your energy and my friend Ellie literally always says to me I see you as the color yellow and I'm like okay I see you as the color green like <laughs> I don't personally get any of that but then I love whenever I listen to ASMR and I also love 
when people tell me what they are getting an energy off of me from. You know what I mean? I love it and I respect that so much and I would love to be able to study that more and I would love to be able to invest myself in that world. But for the meantime, whenever people do that kind of stuff with me, I'm like, this makes me so calm. It makes me calm, but I would love to learn more about it. So if anyone knows anything, let me know about that. Where was that tangent? That was like the weirdest tangent ever. Don't mind me, but I'm going to go on to another tangent now. In different parts of the world, you have different pet shops. And over here, we have one called Pets at Home. Now I remember the day before lockdown happened, they stopped selling their animals. And I went in looking to get a guinea pig, obviously. And obviously the worker refused to give me one because they were like, hey, we're not selling animals anymore. And I remember I got into like a beef with the Pets at Home Twitter account because I was like adding them and I was so angry. I was like, the animals in pet shops are in bad conditions. I'm sorry, like that's, whether you want to say it's an unpopular opinion or what, they're in small cages, whether they get shown love by the employees out of our times and stuff, they're in that really small cage, there's a lot of animals put into one, they don't have enough space, enough toys, arguably enough food, that's my own opinion. And so I was so annoyed at the fact that they were like, oh, we're not going to start selling animals again for another couple months because of Corona and all like that, and it was completely understandable, but the, my argument was, wouldn't you much rather give these animals away, like your final batch of animals away to their forever homes so that they can have a good few months instead of being stuck in there? Because the animals they were refusing to give away were like hamsters and stuff like that. Hamsters live for one to two years. So them keeping them for like four months is most of their lifespan gone. So why wouldn't you give that to a forever home? So then you're gonna sell an animal to someone whenever lockdown's over and they have like only a couple months left to live. I was so avidly angry at the fact they weren't selling their animals. Not just because I wanted to get a guinea pig, but also because I was like, there are so many animals in here right now that they're gonna refuse to sell. And I'm pretty sure animals can't even carry Corona or something, but that's besides the point. It was like, it was so frustrating to me and it was something I was so passionate about. But anyway, I'm pretty sure that they are selling animals again, which I'm really happy about. But it only happened recently, so all them animals from back then are only being sold now. So it's kind of like everything that happened with Corona was like there's so many like subsections of things that have been affected. And I'm happy now that those animals will finally be able to go to their forever home because I really do care so much about animals. And like people are like, oh, I care about animals. I love dogs. I'm like, no, I love like reptiles. I love rodents. I love dog. Like I love little different kinds of animals. And the only animals I don't really fuck with are fish because fish scare the shit out of me. Like... I don't see a purpose for fish, keeping them as a pet. Like, what do they do? They're like an object, literally. What's your opinion on fish? For me, I don't see a purpose with them at all. They're slimy, they're pretty, but they don't do anything. It's literally just having like a piece of rubber floating around in water, in my opinion, I don't know. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay, everyone, well, as you can see, I'm a very slow eater. This is how much I've at. <laughs> I've barely even touched this. I'm gonna save this for tomorrow. And I barely touched the other one, so I'm gonna give that to my brother. My problem is whenever I buy food, I get so excited that I just overspend. So I love you. I'll see you in my next video. If you want more of these like little mukbangs, let me know where we just talk and chill. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. And you know what? Peace. Love you, bitch. Mwah.